Hi there, this is Fiona. I'm going to show you how to make an eatable food object in a VR chat world using the Cyan Trigger system. This is a prefab that I made uh, in SDK2 quite a while ago that I've recreated to kind of show you how this system works and how it differs from SDK2. So what does this do? This would be if you have a object in your world, this is a pickup right here. I've got this green apple. And when you collide your face into it, it will do something. In this case, it made a sound. You couldn't see it very well, but it played a particle. And then after a couple seconds, it respawns back where it was. So we're going to show you how to build that right now. So what you need to start this project is you need a uh, Cyan Trigger, which you can get from Cyan Lasers Patreon. And you should probably have Cyan Emu in your package as well. Um, that way you can test it in Unity like I do. You probably also need to be familiar with some basic Unity terms and how to upload a world to VRChat. So I've got a VRC world in here. I've got uh, my example set up. And so we're going to go ahead and start from scratch here. So I've already built a little example pickup. And so here's my little example pickup. I've just got a parent here that's an empty. Under it, I have a empty called visual and then a place where I can throw in meshes. So this is, makes it really easy to swap out. Um, so that way, if I want to change the appearance of something, I can do it regardless of everything else that's going on. I've also made a little particle system. This particle system plays some little juice particles and it is not play on, oh, it says it's play on awake. We're going to take that off and make sure it is also not set to looping. So it should just play like that when we tell it to play. And then we have eat sound, which is an audio source already set up with a VRC spatial audio source to make it sound right in game. You can see my settings here if you want to copy them at some point. And I've already got a clip in it, although you don't actually need to have the clip, just so you know. Okay, first thing we need to do is make this into a pickup. You should already be familiar with this. You add the VRC pickup. It will add a rigid body. That rigid body, I'm making kinematic and turning off gravity. This will make it easier for you to not have to worry about dropping the object. It will just stay in place when you hold it. And then in our VRC pickup script, uh, we've got it pick up a bowl. That's great. I'm going to leave everything else alone. We want everyone to see where it is. So we're going to put object sync on there. And then object sync, I'm going to take off collision ownership transfer. That is just an extra little check because there can be some performance issues with collision transfer. The last thing we need to add is a collider. That's the thing that you actually interact with when you pick it up. And it's what we're going to use to detect when it has hit your head so that you eat it. And so in this case, I'm going to use a sphere collider. That's super big. We want to make it kind of fit our apple. So about 1.05. Oh, that looks about right. 0.05. There we go. There's our, our, our collider. I want it to be a trigger collider. Trigger means that it won't bump into things. So that is now a trigger collider. We're done with the pickup. This will now act just like a pickup in game. It's got all the things we need. Okay, now comes the fun part. Let's figure out what we want to have it do. First thing we're gonna do is add a sign trigger. We are for now going to avoid the variables here. And because we already have object sync on here, sign is going to throw an error if we leave this on manual. So we're going to change it to continuous, but you don't really need to worry about that because we're not going to be doing much with uh, variable syncing. So just hide the variables for now. Okay, let's talk this through. What do we want to have happen when we pick up this object? We want to have it disappear. So we need to know to do something with the renderer. We want it to play a particle. So we need to do something with the particle system. We want it to play a sound. So we need to do something with the sound. Um, and then we want it to respawn eventually back where it was. All right, well, let's let's go ahead and just start off with what happens when it collides with your head. Um, I'm going to make a event collision on trigger enter. Because this is a trigger collider, we use on trigger enter. If it was a regular collider, you'd use on collision enter. But trigger collider, we do it that way. Now here on this cyan trigger, there is this thing called VRC direct, and it's going to give you a collider that it that is this colliding with. I actually want to know what object we're colliding with. I want to say I only want to collide with the player. So I'm going to put in a game object. 
add one. Well, where's the player? Where is it? What are we colliding with? Haha, -ha, Cyan has already thought this through. He's already thought this through for you. Just search for player tracker. Right here in your folder, if you have Cyan Trigger installed, you will have assets, Cyan Trigger, examples, prefabs. There's this thing called player tracker. Just throw that in your scene somewhere. Doesn't matter where. Does not matter where. All this will do is it will uh, figure out where the heck your face is. That's all you need to know. And the only thing we need to put on this is a collider so that you know when it is hit your food. So let's add, oh, let's add a sphere collider. And this one, um, I'm gonna say about 2.25 would be a generous head size. So that way if the food gets anywhere kind of near your camera, you're gonna eat it. Back to our food. All right, so what are we doing? On trigger enter, what are we, what are we looking to collide with? Player tracker, drag that right in. What is gonna happen? The first thing that we want to do is if someone's holding it, you want to make them drop it because if they are holding it and you don't say that and you turn the stuff on, they'll still be holding something invisibly in their hand and controlling its position. We don't want that. So we're going to go ahead and look for a VRC pickup. VRC pickup and then VRC pickup we're going to call VRC pickup drop. Now, here's our first cyan trigger action. Ooh, look, this is the event. That's the untrigger enter. When does it happen? The action is what is happening. Okay, so we are making something drop. What is dropping? This is, right? This pickup is dropping. That's all we need to do. And now this little handy thing here, we can minimize it to kind of get this out of the way. We don't have to look at it anymore. All right, what's the next thing that we want to have happen? Let's make it disappear. In Unity, what makes things visible and not visible? Renderers. Anything that's a renderer is a thing that shows it to your eyeballs. So let's go ahead and turn that off. Let's look for renderer in our list. Renderer. This is the hardest part about sign trigger, to be honest, is figuring out what is the thing that you are looking for. I know this from experience that I'm looking for a renderer set enabled because I've done this before. If you don't know how to do this, you can look up Unity documentation or you can do this shortcut the sign has given you. If you're familiar with SDK2, look what we got here. We've got game object set component active and then you're going to be like well let's put in this apple and the component name is going to be mesh renderer false he will do handle all this for you if you're familiar with sdk2 you can just use this little sdk2 menu instead of using the plus that is fantastic however i'm going to do it the unity way and which is a little more efficient than what sign has done um, as sort of like a easy thing for you so i'm gonna get rid of that one i'm gonna just do it directly render set enabled we need to put a renderer in and that render is our apple that's the visual one that's where our mesh renderer is and that is false fantastic okay we're we've dropped it we've hidden it we want to play that sound to play the sound we got to find where the audio source is and then there's this wonderful uh, method called play one shot. It's a, it's a great, great way to play uh, audio effects. But you do need two things here, okay? So in this case, there's different kind of flavors of this. We're gonna use the audio source audio clip. If you ever have an action, you're like, well, I wanted it to do something else. Look to see if it's got other flavors and you can pick which one you want. So our audio source is our eat sound. What sound do we want? I happen to know this thing was called Juicy Crunch. There it is. That's the sound that we're gonna play. And you can put in whatever sound you want here. It doesn't have to be the one that is actually on the audio source. That's kind of handy. All right, we're gonna play that. We wanna play our particles. So, uh, particle system, play. And that will play because we have got this the particle system set up to just do like one, and we just drag that in, our particles. And we want to make sure this says true, right? So true or false. So like up here, when we wanted to hide it, remember, our input is false. So mesh renderer, false. That means turning it off. That's like, you know, checking the component off. Um, but our particle system, we want to play, so we say true. All right. Now we have to figure out how do we reset it. So let's add an event. All right, so we're going to make a custom in this case. A custom is just... Another collection of stuff 
that you haven't decided how you're going to do it yet. Maybe you want to call it under different circumstances. It's great to build almost all of your actions under customs and then call them. Um, in this case, we're just going to do one. We're going to make a custom and we're going to call it reset. And what's great about this is we can call it and we can give it a delay. So anything that happens under here will happen five seconds because we put in a five right there after we call it. Okay. And the things that we want to do, we want to turn the visuals back on. So that's just like we had before. Renderer set enabled. Same thing, right? And we're going to drag in our apple. And this time we're going to put true. But guess what? This could be even easier because we are just doing the opposite what we did before. Um, oh, I forgot something we needed to do up here. You don't want to be able to pick up an invisible apple. We need to turn its collider off. Let's do that too. Collider set enabled. And then this is going to be the collider that's on our pickup. We're going to turn it off now, but we want to turn it back on after it resets. Look, you can do control D or you can duplicate. I just duplicated that. Let's drag this down here and then let's turn it true. Oh, so much easier than having to type everything back in. So whenever you've got something you want to reuse, you can just duplicate it either with shift D like you do in unity or sorry, control D, or you can um, right click, choose from this menu, deselect, duplicate, delete, all sorts of stuff. So we've turned it back on, but now we need to move it. Well, I have a problem. I don't know where we're moving it to. So we're going to have to figure that out. We'll have to figure out where we're going to move it to. So we need to figure out where did it live initially and where is it going to? In this case, we're going to have to add a couple of things called variables. And this is a way to store some information to be used later. So I'm going to assume that we want to have everything come back to where it was at start. So we're going to first add in two variables up here. A variable is just a place to store something. And so the two variables we're going to need is a position, which happens to be a vector three, a vector three. And I'm going to call this home position. And you can see X, Y, Z. Oh, look, there it is up there. X, Y, Z. That's what's going to be stored in there. And I can type those numbers in right now if I wanted, but we're going to be smart and we're going to get it. Uh, so if you move stuff around, you don't have to type the numbers back in. It'll just figure it out on its own automatically. We also need to get the rotation. Rotations are stored, unfortunately, in something horrible called quaternions. Don't worry. You don't need to know about quaternions. You just need to know that there's a rotation and just ignore it. There you go. So home position, home rotation. So the first thing we need to do is figure out where the, what, where these things are. So when you first load into the world on start, let's just figure out where all these things go. So the event that we want is start. And here we're going to look at the transform and get position. So the first thing is going to be this transform and we're going to store it in the home. Same thing, transform, get rotation this time. You may not care about rotation, in which case don't use the rotation parts, but, and then we're going to choose, we could like drag ourselves in. I could have just been like dra drag this into here, right? But just a little bit easier, just hit variable, this transform. So automatically figure out this one that it's on and it'll be home rotation. Okay, so now whenever, whenever you first load into the world, you'll already get where it's supposed to go when you reset. Great, okay, go back to reset. Now we're going to put this back where it was. So then trans form, instead of get, we're now doing set. And luckily there is a uh, one that does both at once, set position and rotation. And then that's where we put this transform and the numbers that we got at the beginning that we stored home position, home rotation. Okay. So now that we'll put them all back here and now we need to reset it. So we're going to call that custom. Here's how you call reset. Cyan trigger, send custom event. It's on the sign trigger. If it was a different on a sign trigger somewhere else, you could drag that in, but we're just using this one. And here's where you have to actually be careful and type in the exact name 
easiest to copy paste. That way you won't have any typos like that. Copy paste. Now, the next thing that's really good to do, debug logs. That's for when something goes wrong and you don't know why. You can figure out where it broke, what it was doing at the time, if stuff actually fired or didn't. And so we're gonna go ahead and add one of these in to each place. So on trigger enter, whenever there is a collision detected, we're gonna get a little debug log. Debug log. Here we're gonna select the string flavor right there. And we're gonna say food collision detected. Okay, and so that will print in this little thing called console over here. You can see already some stuff has happened over here because I hadn't cleared my console. That's where again that's going to end up. And then let's do one in reset as well. So we'll put in a debug log, pick string, and then we'll put um, food reset. So that way we can see in the console when these things happen. Because that way if we see it didn't happen in game, we can see if did it actually not happen or did we just not see it. Um, it'll show up in the console in sign emu. That's fantastic. I think that's it. Let's find out if we did it right. So I'm going to clear the console and then enable, um, or enable play mode. Oh, do you see how I fell off? Here's what I didn't do. My player tracker. Collider. Needs to be trigger or it pushes me off the world. Haha, -ha, there it is. Okay, <laughs> done. All right, try it. We're going to try that again. All right. Now, if you look down here, you can see here's our console. And there's a bunch of stuff that's already happened. The sign is written for us. Okay, here's my pickup. And you can see in the console, Cyan has told us that we're picking up and dropping the, the, the pickup. Now, let's hope this works. Food collision detected. And after five seconds, it reset. Woo, we did it right. Okay, great. And then we can exit play mode. Okay, now the only other thing we need to check here is to make sure that this looks correct to everybody. And so what we have here in every sign trigger is um, the, the sync options for any given action. And in this case, the only thing we need to do is just to make sure on trigger enter, we send it to everybody because everybody's gonna see the player tracker in a different place. So whoever sees this collision will tell everybody to make all this stuff happen. So there we go. Eatable food done in Cyan Trigger. Thank you for watching.